Number 20, Lockie Plowman. What is next? He, Ari, Lockie Plowman would have to be one of the most polarizing players on the list. No. Just every club has them. It just, it is what it is. It seems, it's, he's a very interesting case study. He seems to maybe not be appreciated so much from the outside, but clearly when you look at best and fairest results and, and what the coaches are saying and, and things like that, you, th- th- he clearly does something very important for, for the team. Um, that's obviously going unnoticed. But as we move into season 2022 and a few more names start popping up in that back line, where do you see Lockie Plowman in this team? I think I'm I'm one of the very few out there that is a I, I defend him more than a lot of other people do. I think I think his role in the side is underappreciated. Yeah. Um I don't granted he's not the best player in the team, he's not the best defender and he's not the most skilled, but I think we saw in those last season he missed that ch- middle chunk of the year uh, through suspension and injury. I think Paplik in the in the games that he missed, Tom Papley kicked three, um, Liam Ryan kicked four, and Toby Green kicked four. Now I'm not saying if obviously if Plamel was playing, he'd play on those players. I'm not saying that they would have kicked none and had no impact. But would they have kicked would they have kicked more on him? I think when you look at precedent, I don't, I don't think they would have. Um, I think he's a very like you said, polarizing. I think is the best word to describe him because. I mean, Bolton came in and he played him. T came in and he played him. It'll be interesting to see if Voss, who we we know has different expectations, we'll see if he continues to play. I'd be shocked if he didn't play round one. Yeah, uh, honestly, I would. I'd, I'd be I'd be stunned. I think he'll definitely be there. I think the his ability to play on the small forwards and play a little bit taller than than his own size is what makes him very unique. I feel like when he ha- when he comes up against these gun small forwards, and we know, and you know, the role is clearly defined to just you know stop Liam Ryan or stop Charlie Cameron. I find that he plays better in those games yeah. than when he doesn't necessarily have you know a dangerous player to play on or one of the superstar small forwards to yeah. play on, and he starts roaming. I I find that almost the more he has time to think about, the more he has those uh, yeah. old moments. I'll call them, but. I don't know. I, I, I just I just think all the attributes he has, it's valuable to the team. And I just, I mean, this is coming from someone who used to unfairly criticize him. I definitely did. I didn't see the value as much as what others did. I feel like he's also one of the few players where, like, everyone makes mistakes. But because he's on a part of the ground where yeah. if you make a certain mistake, it just looks worse because the, the punishment or the consequence is worse than if you make the same mistake you know, halfway up the ground. And I yeah. think that's that's part of it as well. And combine that with Carlton fans in general, we're very emotional, we're very frustrated, we're very, you know, we're just we're just impatient as well. Um, when you combine all of it together, it just becomes a bit of a shitstorm. Yeah. I, th- I think you hit the nail on the head with, as a defender, if you make a mistake, it's a lot more noticeable because you're going to cop a goal like most likely. Whereas if a forward makes an error, Oh, we like we don't kick a goal, but it's not the end of the world, right? We might get possession back or whatever. Um, w- question quickly: Why yeah. do you reckon he's this like polarizing? Why do you think like the fan base is completely split on him? I don't know. I, I feel like th- there's a couple of things. I think his body language at times can frustrate. Okay. It can frustrate. I remember certain situations. The one that comes into my head straight away, there's two. There's there's the Collingwood game in 2021 where he's smiling and we're down five, six goals and to go is kick five on him in a half and you just see him smiling on the field and after the game and all of that. I, th- I remember 2019 when we played North Melbourne and Jones was knocked out and yet again, he's smiling. It just, it's nothing. It's really nothing. But little things like that, I think, yeah. can, can frustrate. Also, he's not, he's not, he's very low key which I think is great. Yeah. You know, he's not yeah. like someone on social media. He's not flaunting anything. He's very. Re- he seems very reserved. He doesn't speak a lot in press conferences or anything like that. So we don't get to see much of his personality. And I feel like because of that, there might be a little bit of confusion as to where he sits 
um, because we don't really know him. We don't really yeah. know him. I, I mean, I can understand that as well. Like some players want to have that privacy and whatever. It, you know, it is what it is. But I think without hearing from him, without seeing a bit of his personality, it's hard to cast judgment on on how valuable he is and whether he's really committed. Which I'm sure that I'm sure he is. I'm sure they all are. It's so interesting because he's always in good shape. Actually, I'll go one step further. He's always in elite shape. I would say he's one of the better conditioned athletes that we have at the club. He's unassuming. He plays a role. It's not a sexy role. Um, He keeps it simple. Yeah, he's not a superstar, but you don't need 22 superstars. You need a couple of role players in there as well. It's quite confusing. What do you think? Do you think that that lack of relatability maybe has a big part part to play because like you said, we don't really know him. He's just not like he like he doesn't speak in interviews. He's not all over the club socials, like doing bits to camera or whatever. Do you think that like we're frustrated at his performance, but we're also frustrated that we don't know who he is? Type maybe joking that's an aspect where the hate comes from. I think we are a society that loves to point the finger. Yeah. I think we are, we are a species that socially, when anything's going wrong in any realm, whether it's sport or life or politics or anything, we here in Australia, I mean, I'm sure it happens around the world as well, but we here in, in Melbourne especially, we love to have someone to blame or something to blame. And I think he and a couple of other players cop that. I've said it numerous times. It's unfair. I mean, I've done it myself and I've kind of watched and learned and, and, and you know, evolved from it. But, yeah, I think we're just looking for a scapegoat all the time. And I think he's just one of those people that falls into that because he's not a standout superstar. And it's very easy to look at his stats sheet and see nine disposals and just forget about the role that he played on the day. You know, I, I don't I actually don't think he's making as many mistakes as what people uh, make. Yeah. to make. You know, he's really not. Yeah, I think I think like like what we was touched on before. It's just his mistakes are amplified mm. because he gets he gets he loses his man in defence and the, the player takes a mark kicks a goal. Oh, right, let's play on it again, play on it again, type of thing. And he's the biggest scapegoat in our team, and I do, and it doesn't help when we're performing poorly. I think hopefully this season we start to win a, more, win a few more games and start to dominate a few more games as well. Um, hit that pressure of that of him being the scapegoat will s- sort of relieve itself. Mm-hmm. And it also doesn't help that the ball is getting kicked into our defensive 50, 50 million times a game. Right? So once we get – like he's not as good as a defender as Jones and Weedering were last season. And we praise them for being these like superhumans practically with, with, with how much the ball is getting kicked inside there, right? Plowman is not as good, so he's going to be exposed a little bit more. It's just nature. And I, I also think coaching has a lot to do with it. I think we said about Tagoe, he got killed by Tagoe in round two. He was left one out with him in the square. Like Tagoe is one of the best players in the league at, at playing that position. Why put him there? Why not change something up? I, I think he's been a little bit left out to dry at times as well. A hundred percent. I think we pick and choose when we want to use. You're right. When when we talk about the midfield pressure, it hasn't been where we need it to be. It's been poor. You know, to put it yeah. lightly, that's obviously going to be impacting our defenders. And it's funny because when we talk about Weedering or when we used to talk about Jones or, or whoever else in that back line, we would say, oh, yeah, but you know what? The midfield's letting them down. But we seem to forget about that reason when it comes to plan when we don't give him that benefit of the doubt in that same argument. Yeah. Uh, I'm with you on that. And I think the other thing you touched on, which is important, is is coaching, is this new coaching group, this new defensive philosophy. It's all based around pressure, which these are all you know beautiful words that we hear every year. And whenever we get a new coach, it all sounds the same. But I think the difference this time around is this, you know, the actual standards within are going to be very high and very much uh, they're going to they're going to hold up and people won't be getting away with things. Um, I also think there's certain moments that can change a player's reputation for the better. And I know that he got suspended for it, but if you look at yeah. the collision with him and O'Meara last year, which he, you know, you know, lucky copped a two-week suspension for. 
there seemed to be, I remember it, there were quite a few people that really praised him for it. And I think maybe some moments like that can help him along the way where he's just cracking in, going in hard. Yeah, he might have copped a two-week suspension. He, I think he got injured from that from that collision as well. But I feel like that almost helped him as well. Yeah, I think it did because there's, again, the notion around that he's soft as well, that he's a soft yeah. player. He doesn't he's crack rubbish. in. It. Yeah. yeah. I think that showed, no, he's not. Like, he, I'll, like, I remember exactly where I was sitting when I watched it. I saw him run about 50 metres coming. I was like, something's going to happen here. But as soon as that happened, the whole Grand Slam, the Grand Slam erupted. Like, it was a real, it was a real moment, like a, a statement from him as well. I'm not sure if he, like, I'm, I, he definitely didn't mean it to be like that to the fans. But it was like a, a moment of yeah, I am tough. Like I am a AFL footballer. I this is my job. Like I'm not this. I the, I think most fans are treating him as if he's like a bloke that's been picked off the street and put in the fence. Like he's rubbish. He's soft. All this stuff. Where he's like no, like he's a AFL footballer for a reason. Yeah. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. Look, we'll ask you guys in the audience to give your view and your predictions for for Lockie Plowman in 2022. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I, I, if he's healthy, he plays 20 games for me, like 20 plus, yeah, 22 exactly. games, whatever many we've got. I just think if he's healthy and available, he's got a spot in the team. I don't think we're in a situation where, you know, he's on his last legs and, he, oh, gosh, what's he going to be? It's make or break. I don't think that's where you categorize Lockie Plam. And I think he's definitely in our best 22. Um, I think he'd be one of the first few players picked in that back line. And I'm hoping that with a better structure in our midfield which doesn't leak as much as what it has over the last few years i I just hope that by the end of this year there's a a, a greater level of respect from you know for Lockie plowman now that's that's going to be that has to be earned from him but i think as the as time goes on we'll appreciate him again if this team improves so um yeah let us know in the comments how you see Lockie plowman's role in in 2022 and, and beyond